it, it sort of almost skipped, right? Yeah. Those embers. But 530. The premier yeah. gets a first-hand look at some of the damage done by raging fi wildfires in the province. Today, she toured Entwistle and was updated on the situation. Good evening. We'll have more on the wildfire situation in just a moment. But first, Pinoca RCMP are looking for what they call an armed and dangerous man. They're asking those near Township Ro Road 422 and Range Road 245A in Pinoca County to shelter in place. That was the last place police believe 30-year-old Zachary Dillon Littlechild was. He's described as standing 6'3", weighing about 249 pounds. He was, has blue eyes, brown hair with blonde tips, and was last seen wearing a black shirt and track pants. Police believe he is armed, so if you encounter Littlechild, do not approach him. Mounties say to call 911 if you see anything suspicious. Now, police have much of the area blocked off in helicopter were circling the area as officers search for Little Child. Officers are urging people to not pick up hitchhikers and secure their doors and windows. They're also asking people to avoid posting officers' locations on social media. If you have any information, you're asked to contact police or Crime Stoppers. There are now 108 wildfires burning across our province, 31 out of control. In the last 24 hours, 16 new fires have started. Ten fires in central and northern Alberta are considered a priority. The total area of the province that's burned so far has now surpassed 375,000 hectares, which is roughly six times the size of the entire city of Edmonton. Alberta Wildfire says some scattered showers as far north as Fox Creek did have an impact on fire behavior today. It allowed firefighters to get to areas they haven't been able to until this point because of dense smoke and out of control conditions. However, the northern part of the province still proves to be a challenge as conditions remain the same. Many evacuees have expressed frustration about not knowing when they'll be able to return home or what they're actually returning home to. The Emergency Management Agency is asking for patience. At this time, reports are still coming in. In some cases, ongoing smoke and fire conditions prevent us from fully assessing property loss and until we can do that, we are limited in the details we can provide. Both the Emergency Management Agency and Alberta Wildfire say while they know some stru structures have been lost, human lives and keeping the fires away from communities is their main concern. 29,000 Albertans are currently out of their homes due to wildfires. Today, Premier Danielle Smith toured Entwistle, one of the first communities evacuated just over a week ago. Miriam Valdez Carletti has more. Rubble and soot, all that's left of a home in Entwistle. Wildfires started burning here just over a week ago, forcing people to leave. While evacuees wait for the all clear, Premier Danielle Smith got a first hand look at what they'll come home to. So it came from over there and then? That's right, yeah. The smell of smoke lingers in the air, overlooking a valley full of burnt trees and grass. I can see why there's so much caution because we see smoldering piles uh, around on not only near where there will be homes but also across the, the way. Crews are now battling stubborn peat moss fires still burning below the surface. We're, we're in that trying to contain it, and then after we contain the fire and it's being held then we'll move back and move into that overhaul and, and continue to make it safe. After a week of hot, dry and windy conditions, rain and clouds are a welcome relief. Well, today has been probably the best day uh, in terms of the, the moisture content and actually starting last night um, that we've seen. The, the, really, the weather has been extreme. As for the fate of other homes in the area, the Parkland Fire Department says damage is still being assessed. And we're hoping that if good news continues to, that we can get our residents back to their homes soon. The Premier has a few asks from the Prime Minister. Alberta is looking for military firefighting help, engineers to help assist with fire breaks, and how to best serve First Nations that have been impacted by the fire. That conversation is expected in the coming days. Miriam Valdez Carletti, CTV News, and Whistle. The mayors of Edson and Yellowhead County believe people may be able to return to several communities as early as tomorrow. They're excited for the town of Edson to be going back home. It's been a rough couple days. 
Uh, and of course, they're split out between uh, many, many, many communities across the province. The two mayors are on their way to Jasper, where people from their communities have evacuated to. The plan is for Edson evacuees to go home tomorrow. In Yellowhead County, those who live east of Marlboro to Chip Lake will also be allowed back. Wildwood and Evansburg are without power, water and sewage. An evacuation order remains in effect. Danielle and Danielle Smith and Rachel Notley put their differences aside this morning to discuss the wildfire situation and visit with evacuees at the Edmonton Expo Center. CTV's Merrick Takash has more. During her first visit to the largest fire evacuation center in the province, Premier Danielle Smith praised the city of Edmonton and Mayor MRG Sohi for their help. There's good food in there, good support. Uh, Mayor Sohi and his team at, uh, with, with Edmonton have done a tremendous job of being able to provide supports. Evacuees are echoing her sentiments. Everybody's been very kind, um, compassionate, um, and, and in feeling for Drayton Valley. As for their thoughts on Smith's visit. I had to bite my tongue. Um, I don't think she should be here because of her previous track record for things like this. That they care, that they're here, that they're present, that they're talking to us directly is, is a comfort. NDP leader Rachel Notley also met with Smith to share her experience dealing with the Fort McMurray wildfires in 2016 while she was premier. After their meeting, she too met with evacuees. I was here mostly to just say, listen, you know, your government, uh, regardless of what's going on with the election, is going to have your back and we're going to do everything we can uh, to support support you and, and others in your communities. Sean Dill arrived in Edmonton from Drayton Valley early Friday morning. He spoke with Smith about insurance. She said she would look into it and one of her helpers was writing stuff down because they did say they were going to help the uninsured but they hadn't thought about people that had deductibles and stuff and they may look into it. An organizer with the Emergency Response Center says things have slowed down considerably since Friday. A lot of the people have relied on family and friends but they still utilize this facility for uh, necessities that they need, food, uh, uh, shelter Animal Control is here helping out, and uh, AHS is also here. More than 1,400 people have registered at the Expo Center as of Sunday afternoon. 37 people spent the night on Saturday, and 35 people the night before. Merrick DeCash, CTV News, Edmonton. When asked about compensation for evacuees, the Premier said there is a policy in place where money is available after 10 days and more information will be released in the coming days. An out-of-control wildfire in northern Alberta has almost quadrupled in size since Friday. While everyone from Fox Lake Cree Nation is safe, buildings have been destroyed. Jessica Robb has the story of one man who lost his childhood home. I barely finished that whole song because I was getting pretty pretty emotional. It was something that I, uh, my way of helping helping my, my people. Rick Labucan lives in high level, but Fox Lake will always be home. Seeing videos of the wildfire that forced the community's evacuation is hard for him, especially knowing his childhood home, where his parents were still living, is no longer there. I got a lot of nieces and nephews that were, that were running around there, like, just couple of weeks ago, weeks ago before the fire, right, so, yeah. Little Red River Cree Nation says everyone has been evacuated and no one has been injured. It's asking members who haven't already registered with the band office to do so as soon as possible. People were evacuating before we actually issued the order of evacuation, right? So because of that, a lot of our members aren't registered. So getting a handle on the exact numbers has been difficult. But we know that there was approximately 3,700 people that live in Fox Lake. Labucan says seeing his parents and grandparents after they evacuated to high level was hard. He didn't want to believe what was happening was real. Emotional, anger, sad, mad. I didn't know what to feel. It was, I didn't want to believe it either, but it was it was so true. Feeling helpless, Labukan says what he could offer his family was his drumming. Any drum out there is uh, is a is a tool of, of healing. It's a very powerful, uh, sacred tool that always brings a smile to their faces, keep their heart 
For his community, Labukan has a message. I just want to give a shout out to my home nation, everybody back home. Let's work together. Let's keep working together. Let's stay positive. Um, the most important thing is everybody's out. Everybody's safe. We will rebuild everything. We will go home again. Jessica Robb, CTV News. Edmonton. Little Red Re excuse me, Little Red River Cree Nation has set up a GoFundMe to raise money for toiletries and other essential items for Fox Lake ev evacuees. You can find it by going to our website, ctvnewsedmonton.ca, and clicking on news links. High Level is hoping to work with the provincial and federal governments on getting a new evacuation center. These people are already going through a very traumatic event. Like, why do we need to make that part more traumatic for them? That they're going into a space that maybe isn't ready all the time. The town's arena is acting as a temporary home for evacuees from Fox Lake and Rainbow Lake. High Levels, excuse me, High Levels Community Service Director says a permanent center would better serve the annual intake of people. The RCMP says it's working to keep looting out of evacuated communities to a minimum. And we're seeing limited thefts uh, within these areas. And um, we are seeing that, generally speaking, it's involving people that have stayed behind, but not all of them. Um, and it's been fairly limited. And we have been successful in uh, making some arrests and preventing some of that activity. Police say they've seen similar situations in the past and have planned for it. Officers are making additional patrols in evacuated communities. The RCMP says some arrests have been made in the Entwistle area, along with four arrests in Drayton Valley. As crews battle one of the busiest starts to fire season in years, the union representing Alberta Wildland firefighters says there is a shortage of experienced crews right now because of cuts and changes the government has made in recent years. As Jeremy Thompson reports, the government begs to differ. I started in 1982, and this is the worst start to a fire season I can remember. Mike Dempsey is a wildland firefighter turned union vice president. Right now, he's concerned for the roughly 500 firefighters and forestry officers the AUPE represents. I've talked to a number of people on the front line. They're already using terms like PTSD. Um, in terms of how stressed out they're feeling. Dempsey says there's a shortage of firefighters in Alberta, especially those with experience. Crews like this one sent to fight fires in Oregon in 2020. The government instituted, the UCP specifically, instituted a number of cost-saving measures in different departments. Research by the union shows Alberta lost 63 specialized firefighters when the Repel program was cut in late 2019. The government cut training grants and shaved more than 50 jobs in wildfire and forest management. Plus, Dempsey says this year's new recruits will be ready to deploy later this week instead of in early April like last year. It should be done. Everybody should be out to where they need to be, and they're not. There's no set time that all of our firefighters are on board and ready. Alberta Wildfire says it has an ample supply of experienced local firefighters and is able to lean on other provinces and countries for extra manpower if needed. As for the impact of government cuts... I would never speculate on, on any of the um, actions or, or budget actions that have been taken over the last few years. We did have a very difficult situation, as you know, for eight years in this province of being in a recession and massive deficits. Daniel Smith says crews will have everything they need thanks to a $1.5 billion wildfire contingency fund. As as of this morning, I had been told that all of our resources were being deployed. We've got 600 firefighters that uh, are, are in service. Dempsey doesn't buy it. The union VP says more needs to be done to retain experienced personnel, a long-term solution to a problem government officials say doesn't exist. Jeremy Thompson, CTV News, Edmonton. Edmonton fire crews were back at a smoldering fire near 111th Avenue off the Anthony Henday today. A firefighter telling CTV News they were deployed there at least five times as people are calling 911 about smoke in the area. Now this is what it looked like last Monday as huge plumes of smoke forced the road to close for several hours. The 111th off ramp is still closed tonight. 
Supplies for pets displaced by the fires are on their way to evacuation centers across Alberta. Animal Food Bank volunteers in Medicine Hat have loaded a truck with supplies destined for high level. They're shipping food, crates, dog beds, and medication. The same group shipped supplies to pets during the fires and floods in BC in 2021. The founder says they provided roughly 10,000 pet pounds of pet food. We never want somebody to have to face surrendering their pet in this circumstance, especially because they can't feed them. I can't imagine being displaced from my home and then, you know, showing up at an evacuation center and not being able to feed my pet and having to face that heartbreaking decision. The foundation says it's reached out to the province to find out where else needs supports. After several really gusty days, the wind finally is dying down and it should stay pretty light through the day Monday, about 5 to 10 kilometers per hour out of the southeast. And there's more scattered showers in the forecast as well. Had a bit of that precipitation in the Edmonton area earlier in the day today. Both Monday and Tuesday late in the day could see some hit and miss precipitation. We'll talk more about that and the heat that's returning towards the end of the week in just a few minutes.